hello darlings wow it is freezing in Firenze I'm starting a little bit earlier actually because it's like around one degrees and I have to take Diego to soccer around 4 30 so I'm actually standing mm, can you see him where is he no, it's over here. Hi, Carolyn. I'm just standing in front of Dante Leggeri. You can see him behind me. And I'm in Piazza Santa Croce. Now, this square is... Ciao, Cecilia! This beautiful square, you know, before the lockdown, I haven't really been spending a lot of time in Piazza Santa Croce because it's always so full of people. And, you know, one of the, 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 the pros of not having a lot of people around is that you can rediscover a lot of areas um, and just fall in love with them again. And Santa Croce, Piazza Santa Croce is one of them. So from this square, we're going to walk up towards, um, past a very famous street called Via dei Neri that is full of street food, um, which is, of course, the Panino. Wow, minus 17, Val. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't even imagine. And, and we're going to arrive at a friend of mine's um, delicatessen. And we're going to enjoy some Panino. Ciao, darling, Sue. And a nice glass of rosé. And warm up inside his beautiful little uh, delicatessen. So for the new, those of you who are new and don't know me, my name is Linda. I'm the owner, I'm a tour operator, so I'm the owner of Italy Customized. And I um, have been, I'm originally from Australia, as you can hear from my accent. I've been living in Firenze for 21 years and I organize uh, vacations all over Italy, multi-day. And also, I'm also a culinary guide and a sommelier. So I do a lot of walk, food and wine walks around the city. And that's kind of my passion is just to talk to you about food, wine and historical aspects. So let's start walking. Let me first show you. For those of you who know Firenze, have you ever seen Piazza Santa Croce like this? It's kind of uh, incredible. It is very, very cold. So it's like one degrees. It's apparently going to snow this evening. So this piazza um, is actually the oldest soccer pitch in the world. It's where the medieval soccer, the calcio storico takes place still to this day, once a year in this uh, piazza. And here in front of us, I know it's crazy, isn't it? Cecilia, it's so empty, is the Santa Croce Church. So we're actually on the um, lowest uh, part of the city. This was the area that was uh, very much flooded in 1966. In fact, ciao bella Judy! In fact, inside the beautiful church of Santa Croce, where we have the um, uh, tombstones of very famous artists like Michelangelo, inventors like Galilei Galileo, writers like Ugo Foscolo. Um, we also have uh, incredible frescoes by Giotto, that recount the story of um, St. Francis, because this is the church of the Franciscan uh, monks. And, um, and many of them have been uh, damaged because of the flood of 1966. So I can't show you because there's the guys of the military standing in front, but I'm passing by the uh, Pazzi um, uh, Chapel uh, by uh, the great Brunelleschi, and we're making our way down Borgo Santa Croce, I just want to show you, Judy, you missed out how empty the square is. Look, there's no one around. There's no one around. It's unbelievable. We're just hanging out with Dante Ligieri over there. And we're making our way down Borgo La Croce. This street is very, very beautiful. In fact, it's become even more beautiful because they've restored the paving. And you can see this beautiful um, road lined it with... Um, beautiful trees and these gorgeous palaces they just stand out you know uh, this um, street used to be a little bit sad in fact it had loads of cars and it was all really uneven and now it's been restored and you can really see the beautiful palaces in fact the home of Giorgio Vasari the great architect who um, designed the Vasari corridor the Uffizi gallery 
actually lived on this street. I'm not really sure which palace it was, but it's one of these palaces along here. Look how beautiful these uh, palaces are. This one on the left side, we can see a little bit of graffiti. Not the graffiti that we know today, the graffiare, this scratching technique that took place during the Renaissance where they would etch out different patterns. And you can see how beautiful, look how beautiful it is. And this gorgeous um, entry into the palace that obviously now has been transformed into multiple uh, apartments. But we can see that the palace is absolutely beautiful like many of the palaces around the city center and on the left hand side there actually is let me just turn you around is the um, well-known perfumery uh, called aquaflor that is also very beautiful inside this um, beautiful renaissance palace maybe i can go inside mm, no maybe not they're restoring it but here we can see the entry of the perfumers Aqua Flora. Oh, it's actually this palace. It's this palace. Let me just go in. If I get thrown out, I get thrown out. Can actually see this original palace. And this is what makes Firenze so magic, is that you just walk inside these beautiful palaces to see the Pietra Serena classic chiostro. And look at these beautiful frescoes up here. And the entry into the Aqua Flor perfumers. Actually, upstairs, there is a, um, what we call a Residenza d'Epoca. So it's a historical residence, which is uh, like a four-star boutique hotel up on this palace. I'm gonna show you the name so you can look it up online. Here it is. Palazzo Rosselli Cecconi, Residenza d'Epoca. And it's part of this uh, group here. Associazione di More Storiche Italiane. And this group you can actually find online loads of historical residences that are not um, named hotels, but they typically cost less than a three-star, four-star hotel, and they're absolutely beautiful. So, oh, look at the window for Val St. Valentine's Day. Che bello. So we're making our way towards uh, Via di Neri, which is a particular street. You know, over 20 years ago when I arrived in Florence, it was one of the streets that I actually lived on, but it has really changed. It looks a little bit like something that you'd see anywhere else in the world. Um, meaning many of the stores kind of look the same. They're all kind of selling the panini. They're all selling the, the classic uh, sandwich that you get in Tuscany with the schiacciata. So the schiacciata is the salty bread um, that we have as the alternative to our typical bread that doesn't have any salt. So when we go to buy our loaf of Florentine bread at the bakery, there's no salt in the classic recipe of uh, Florentine bread. Yet the schiacciata is um, oily and salty and typically served with um, salumi inside, finocchiona. We know the salumi with the fennel seeds. And let me just see if I can show you this view. Good morning, Shelley. It's very cold. It's like one degrees. You can see the, um, the view up here is um, the Bardini Gardens going up to the villa of the Bardini and then crossing over this side is the Bobbly Gardens okay um, and so the Arno River is just kind of in front of us but we're turning down Via di Neri and as we walk down Via di Neri we can see hi Sue we can see quite a few of the same kind of stores well there's also a great a really nice gelateria gelato shop called Gelateria de, de, de Neri and there we have a gluten-free bakery, but then we kind of start to see similar um, stores. Ciao, ciao Sue from Dallas. Buongiorno. And here we go. We begin with the uh, Vino Toscano and snack. 
the Taglieri Salumi and Formaggio. All the way along here we can find these charcuterie platters of the typical salumi, pecorino cheese, and it just keeps going on and on as we make our way towards Piazza della Signoria. Uh, we're gonna just turn down towards the Uffizi Gallery and make a right towards Alessandro's Delicatessen. But first, we walk down the famous Via dei Neri. So, the streets become very famous because a very smart young Florentine entrepreneur uh, decided to add his little sandwich store to TripAdvisor a few years ago. Anyway, he is um, actually known as the best restaurant on TripAdvisor because, of course, TripAdvisor <laughs> thinks it's a restaurant. Um, in Florence, he has like over 30,000 reviews on Google and TripAdvisor. Now, what's really funny about it is, um, firstly, he, um, they make the classic schiacciata that you can find in most of these stores, like, for example, the prosciutteria. There's another one over here that is selling even the more classic street food of Firenze, which is the lampredotto, the fourth stomach of the cow that is boiled and boiled and boiled and serving these little panini called rosette. So the lampredotto is sold here. And really, so nothing, nothing really new about his schiacciata, just the fact that he actually added it onto TripAdvisor and became very, very famous. Famous all over the world, in fact. Um, in New York, they opened a pop-up store for the day and there was lines and lines and lines of people standing up waiting for this uh, classic schiacciata with the salumi. Now, what's really funny is that um, during the you know, high season, millions of tourists around Firenze, we all thought that it was the tourists standing in line. We realized, hi Steffi, we realized that during the lockdown, it actually, uh, there are actually loads of Florentines standing in line for this uh, famous schiacciata. They're typically very young Florentines, but um, today is very cold. But on a typical day, even during the lockdown, you actually find loads and loads of locals standing in line for the panino at Al Antica Vinayo. So it's really quite funny. Um, you can see that, so 20, around 20 years ago, this was, um, ciao! This was uh, just a typical place where you'd get a glass of white little crostini that's turned into this very famous schiacciateria. And you can see um, why great Bra oh, grazie che hai detto così. Che, così posso fare la spiegazione di Bada come la fuma. Però Bada come la fuma in inglese come, come cavolo posso, posso tradurre? It's like? Smoke, smoke. No, non hashish. No, 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 no. Smoking, um, the, the, the bread is smoking. Bada come la fuma, ma non è la stessa cosa. Bada come la fuma si dice bene a Firenze, bada come la fuma. È vero. E poi quell'altra cosa che dice? Bada come? Mamma mia, ragazzi. Come la hola. E qui, ave cosa avete? La porchetta? Qui vieni qui, vieni qui, ah, vieni qui. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Let's have a look what I have. Cara, cara. Grazie. Guarda, che bellezza. Have a look, guys. You can see. The schiaccia, the, the finocchiona. Si, si. Prosciutto. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> eh, ci sono delle persone su mio Facebook Live che, che facciamo una camminata eh. da Santa Croce a qua. No. Stavamo passando. Ma dove sei tu? Di, io sono di Australia, Australia, ma loro sono maggiormente americani. Ciao americani! Ciao <ride> no, stavo spiegando che, che anche a New York siete stati per forse ora una un settimana. Mese. Un mese! All'incirca, è andato anche lui a New York. Ah sì? Sei andato lui anche è andato tu? Alla CNN, in televisione. Wow, Vero. che bravo! Fatti della faccia, le ati le mutande. Wow, <ride> No, stavo raccontando questo Guarda, posto vent'anni fa, perché mi ricordo vent'anni fa era molto diverso. Oh, buono, questo che buono. 
affettato di canguro vada, cioè, vada sa, sanno di già perché uno ha scritto porchetta con crema è quello che è quello che vuoi canguru canguru eh sì oh guarda si sì, scrivono ciao ragazzi ciao ragazzi ciao ragazzi ciao Complimenti, eh? Grande, oh, grande. Okay. Ciao ragazzi. <laughs> Hai visto che sono bravi. Wow, they are, they are, they are, they've done a, a great, um, they've created an empire um, making schiacciata. <laughs> so, you know, they've, they've, they've made, they've done an incredible job. And here you can see uh, the list of uh, panini. Yeah, they, they, they love it because it's their passion, it's their life. And here we can see um, La Favolosa, the summer, the Schiacciata del Boss, La Dante, l'Inferno. So for six euros, you can uh, buy a delicious uh, Schiacciata. And what's really great is that even locals are standing in line. So that's what's so funny because, because um, you know, what seemed to be a place uh, for tourists it actually isn't. If you go on to um, their YouTube channel, you'll actually see the owner yelling, Bada come la fuma! And, and basically what he's saying is, look how the schiacciata is smoking. And then when he says, Bada come la cola, he's saying, look at this um, delicious creamy sauce that I'm adding to the porchetta. Um, so yeah, they've, they've done a great job and you can imagine, you know, as you saw in Santa Croce, there is absolutely no one around the city, yet the boys at Antico Vinayo have a line for their schiacciata. So it's pretty cool. But I have to say, even though they're great and they're fun, there's a place where I prefer to go to have my schiacciata and I'm going to take you there. Well, you know, everyone has their favorite places. Um, in fact, there's three or four around the city center that are great. And typically street food is in Italy is, um, a, you know, a, a bread a panino or a slice of pizza. And in Firenze, it definitely is a panino from the Lampredotto to the um, panino with um, prosciutto uh, toscano or finocchiona or if you're vegetarian you can even have a, a delicious uh, pecorino cheese um, schiacciata with a little bit of uh, pomodoro uh, sun-dried uh, tomato so let me show you where i am i'm walking up towards the piazza delle signoria eccoci qua and we take a left we say hello to uh, good old Andrea Orcagna ciao Andrea and we make our way towards Alessandro's panino shop and as I was talking about Giotto there's Giotto the inventor of uh, perspective painting so creating a perspective three-dimensional dimensional painting and well there's also a line at the Uffizi gallery so that's a good sign hello darling Annette hello sweetheart and here we're going to take a right you can see this beautiful square that is Piazzale Uffizi designed by uh, the great Giorgio Vasari and on the corner we have the good old Benvenuto Cellini and also a beautiful view uh, behind the crane of the town hall of the Palazzo Vecchio. So let's take the Via Lambertesca to arrive at Alessandro's Delicatessen and you'll see me a little later. You can, I want to show you the beautiful streets of Firenze, the very quiet streets of Firenze unfortunately sunday we're going back into orange zone which means that many of the restaurants again have to become tourists hurry up COVID. i need to return hi robin i know it's crazy but you know sadly we're going back to uh an even severe uh zone 
This is the oldest uh, restaurant in Firenze called Antico Fattore. Been here since 1865. And over here, we're going into Alessandro's little delicatessen. There it is. I might have to turn to his um, um, to his Wi-Fi. So let me just. Okay, there we are. Hang on a minute. There's Alessandro, and here we can see. We saw the guys at Antico Vineo. Yes, they're lots of fun, but this is the place for the panino because here we can see all of the products that are coming directly from Alessandro's son's farm. Mi fai una schiacciata con uh, finocchiona, Ale. I'm going to have the schiacciata with uh, finocchiona. All of these products, all of the salumi are coming directly from Pietro's farm. And here you can see the Cinta Senese, which is the white belted uh, pig, the oldest breed in the world, coming from Tuscany. And here we can see the finocchiona. So if you notice the finocchiona at Antico Vineo, of course it was good, but it didn't look as artisanal as this, this one. And so this is the place for me. When it comes to a panino, and a glass of wine, I love to come to um, Alessandro's Delicatessen. And so he's making me uh, the schiacciata with um, finocchiona. And I'm going to have a glass of rosé. I'm also going to buy some of his olive oil because, as you can see, his olive oil is 100% Toscano. And so it's coming, from again, from Pietro's uh, farm. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy a good uh, schiacciata and have a good old chat with my friend Alessandro. And can't wait for you guys to come back so that we can have a glass of wine together and enjoy a delicious schiacciata. Ciao, bella Gabriella. It's freezing here. It must be freezing in New York City as well, I can imagine. And so now I'm going to show you when uh, Ale has made the schiacciata. Oh my God, it's freezing out there. Can we order this olive to be shipped to Boston? I don't think so, darling, but I'll find out for you. You know, they're not, they don't, they don't have that organization. <laughs> I want to be with you. I want you to be with me too, Steffi. Yeah, I wish they did because actually it's really rare to find the 100% Toscano because usually you can only find 100% Italiano. And, um, and so, you know, let me just check if I have, oh my gosh, it's gonna, we added to my list, freezing here and now, oh my gosh, freezing, freezing, freezing. Okay, let me show you the schiacciata. Look how delicious it is. And, you know, typically they don't add any butter or anything like that. It's not necessary. All the delicious natural fat that's coming from the salumi is enough to enjoy the uh, schiacciata. Bianco. So here it is. Rosé, se ce l'hai o bianco? Bianco. Here it is, guys. Tanti saluti. Tanti baci. Can't wait to see you again. Tanti baci to all of you. Thank you for following me. Love you guys. Ciao tutti. Tanti saluti. Ciao.